Hi class, welcome to lecture 6.3. This is a review for the test guide, so this is really not a real lecture, but I'm going to go over the four problems that you're going to see on uh, exam 6, and they're really going to be 16 problems because there are five boxed answers for each problem, and I'm going to choose four of those five box answers for each problem on the exam. So four times four is 16, and so you can expect to see essentially these exact same questions, except I might change the numbers or something like where it says uh, minus 6%. I might change that to like plus 6% or, or, or something of that nature, right? So we're just making very uh, small numerical changes but uh, hopefully you can prove to me that you understand the process here for calculating the WAG. Now one of the main reasons uh, that I really like to do this at the end of class is because to get the WAC or the weighted average cost of capital which is just like a company's required return to get that number you often have to use v almost all of the skills that you've learned in class so that makes it a, you know like a very good climax or finishing point for the class because it puts all of your tools or all of your skills to use. All right. So with that being said, let's get down to business. Let's take a look at the first one. Now you're going to be given a lot of information here about a company called Around Town Tours. You'll see that you have debt information, common stock information, preferred stock information, and then some general market information. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through there and read each one of those, uh, but I'll, let's just go ahead and say that you've got the information you need. Now when you get down to it though, it says calculate the WAC for this firm. Okay, So to get the WAC for around town tours, you're going to actually have to go through several steps. The equation for a WAC you'll see in step 5, and that is weighted average cost of capital equals the weight of equity, so the percentage of the company that's financed with common stock, plus, I mean times the cost of equity, which all of these costs are essentially just a return, a percentage, right? Um, for time, so the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus the weight of preferred stock times the cost of preferred stock plus the weight of debt times the pre-tax cost of debt times 1 minus T. You could also write this that last part as the weight of debt times the after-tax cost of debt if you knew the after-tax cost of debt, which you will see a problem uh, like that on the test guide, and I will point that out to you, Okay, but it's not this problem. So um, first thing you want to do is figure out what's the overall value of this company. So remember on a balance sheet, if all your assets are on one side, your debt and equity is at the other. So if you can get all your debt and all your equity added up, then that's the total value, right? Because that would be pretty much what that company's worth on either side of the balance sheet. So we're going to first find common stock. So if you see there with get weights, I'm going to, I need to know how many shares there are. I go up to common stock. It says there's 345,000 shares of common stock. Okay, I need to know the price. It says $62. So if I multiply those two together, I get 21,390,000. I want to also find out the preferred stock uh, value. So take the 8,900 shares there and multiply it by $97 a share. You get 863,000, and I believe that's 300. Yeah, 300 right there. So 863,300. And then if uh, you see debt, it says C note. Well, sometimes you got to do a little bit of calculation to figure out the note. I mean, to figure out the debt. So if you go up to debt, it tells you 9,300. So you know the number of bonds right away. Uh, it might, on other problems, it'll say something probably like a $9.3 million debt issue. But you know it's $1,000 per bond or whatnot. So it'd still be 9,300. They just tell you right out, 9300 makes it easy. But what about price? Price, they say, is 97.5%, so or it's a quoted price of 97.5%, so you know that's 97.5% of par, so that's $975, right? So to get debt, you just do 9300 times 975. You get uh, 9067500 So if you add those all three of those up, common stock, preferred stock, and debt, you'll have a total value of 31 million three hundred twenty thousand eight hundred dollars and so that's the total value of the company if you go back and divide each one of those by the total value uh, so for example for equity if you take twenty one million three hundred ninety thousand and divide it by thirty one thousand three hundred twenty uh, thirty one million three hundred twenty thousand eight hundred dollars then you will get what's known as the weight of equity right because we're just we, v is like our total pizza pie and we're trying to see how to break up that pizza pie um, or pie chart or whatnot for each one of these different weights. Okay. Now, once you do this, uh, you know you do 
total equity over total value for weight of equity, you do total preferred stock over total value for weight of preferred stock, total debt over total value for the weight of debt. You're going to get different weights here, and uh, looks like you know 68%, around 3%, and around uh, 29%. So if you add all of those together, you should get 100%. Or, you know, if you keep it in decimal form, it should add up ex almost exactly to 1, right? If you notice, I'm carrying this to 6 digits. The, you know, you don't have to do any more than 6. But if you do it, you need to do it at least to 4. If you got to, the more digits you do this to, the, the closer your answer will be, um, closer you'll be to the correct answer on the exam. All right, so don't round too much here, and that's that's for pretty much all the problems here. Okay, so there's your total there there's your total value in the different weights. Okay, so you've got like pretty much half of the whack equation already knocked out. But now you need to go through here and get all of these percentages that are look like returns, and and you can call them returns if you want, uh, like the return of equity, the return of preferred stock, and the return of debt. But the traditional language is to call those cost, right? Because that's how much they cost, right? So um, what we will do here is look at equity first. Now with equity, sometimes they'll give you information to figure it out using the cap M, which we've all done, or using the dividend growth model, which we've all done. If they give you information, and it's important that you know this, if they give you information to do it both ways, you do it both ways and then you take an average, okay? If you don't take the average, it's considered wrong. Okay, at least in my eyes for this exam, okay, because you didn't really consider all available information. Now, remember the cap M. That's when you got the expected return equals risk-free rate plus beta times R M minus R F in parentheses. That's all that that cap M is, right? If you look up there under the market, they tell you there's a 3.8 percent risk-free rate. They're going to tell you the beta is 1.22. Actually, that's actually up in common stock, but nonetheless and then they're going to tell you the return on the market if you look back in the market data is 13.8 percent so you just plug those in right everybody know, remembers that what the what the cap m is i'll repeat it again is it's the expected return or r subscript e here equals rf which is 0 0.038 plus beta which is 1.22 times in parentheses the return on the market which is 0.138 minus the risk free rate which is 0 0.038 Okay, close parentheses. That's all going to equal 16%. The dividend growth model, uh, you can rearrange it, remember, to get uh, the return equals the dividend yield plus the capital gain yield. So that's what we're doing here. And the dividend yield is D1 over P0. Okay, so you take that dividend for next year, which is $3.05 over $62 for the price plus the 3% growth rate and you've got very close to 8%. So to take the average between them, between a 16% and an 8%, you're going to get really close to 12%, right? So that's why I boxed it in, right? That's one of the answers on the exam. All right. Now, to get the cost of preferred stock is super easy. What you need to know is that the um, in the numerator is going to be the percentage times par, and par for preferred stock, par for preferred stock, par for preferred stock, is a hundred dollars not a thousand right par for a bond is a thousand dollars but par for preferred stock is a hundred dollars so if you look at preferred stock and it says it's seven percent preferred stock that's seven percent of a hundred dollars so that would be seven bucks okay and then you look at the price which you we know uh, just it just tells you right there is ninety seven dollars so seven dollars over ninety seven dollars is seven point two percent and maybe a little bit of extra digits there, right? So um, that's how you get the return or the cost of preferred stock. Now, to get the cost of debt, this is just uh, one of your normal bond problems using the time value money buttons on your calculator. They tell you it's a semi-annual bond, so in this problem they say it's a 14-year bond, so you're going to multiply one, sorry, it's a 12-year bond, and you're going to multiply it times 2, right? So 12 times 2 equals 24, they're going to tell you that the um, we are, we've already figured this out in step one, but that the price is nine hundred seventy-five dollars. So remember, you enter price as negative in your t time value money calculator, so that's negative nine hundred seventy-five dollars. Then you have your payment. Uh, that's going to be if you look up at the debt, it's an eight point five percent bond, so that's eighty-five dollar annual coupon 
divided by two is going to be 4250. Future value is always thousand dollars or par. You saw for I, you're going to get 4.4211 percent, but that's the semi-annual yield of maturity. You got to multiply that by two. Got to multiply that by two to get the annual yield of maturity. That annual yield of maturity is your cost of debt. So in this case, the cost of debt is 8.8422 percent. Now that you got those three, you go down there and plug and chug. Um, you're going to multiply, obviously, the weight of equity times the cost of equity and the weight of preferred stock times the cost of preferred stock and the weight of debt times the cost of debt. But be careful. That cost of debt also has is the pre-tax cost of debt, so you have to multiply that by 1 minus T as well. And in this case, if the tax rate is 32%, that would mean you need to multiply that by 68%. Okay? So put all that information in the equation the right way. Add those three different uh, sections together, and you're going to get 10.11% for the weighted average cost of capital. Isn't that amazing? Now, that was just a whole lot of this class all wrapped up into one problem. I think it's fantastic, and that's why I save it for the final exam. Now, the next problem, Casper's, is probably the most difficult problem on the exam. Okay, now since there's only four, it's not saving much, saying much, but it's a little bit more complicated because it has an extra step where you take it to get the you know actual MPV of the project using the WAC. Do I think it's that hard? No, not really, but you do want to pay attention and make sure that you you know follow all the little bitty directions here. Okay. So Caspers is analyzing a proposed expansion project much riskier than the firm's current operation. Thus, the project is going to be assigned a discount rate equal to the firm's cost of capital plus 5%. So what that means is that we're going to find the WAC, and then that's going to be the WAC for the company. But we need to also find a project WAC. And so in this case, they're going to add 5% because this is going to be a riskier project than what the company would normally take on. And so that you can make adjustments for WACs for specific projects. Maybe this uh, one project is going to be safer than what the company normally does. Um, so you might adjust the WAC, but using minus 5%, right? But in this case, it's riskier, so you're going to add 5%. Now, they're going to tell you that the initial cost here is $27.2 million. That's something that you're going to use when you're getting the MPV, and you're going to depreciate that on a straight line basis over 20 years. Okay, that's basically telling you that it's going down to zero. Uh, the project also requires additional inventory of $987,000 over the project's life. Management estimates that this facility will generate an operating cash flow, that's what OCF stands for there, of $1.85 million a year over its 20-year life. Okay, so now you got the operating cash flow as well. So, and then you have the net working capital right before there of 987000 That obviously would go in year zero and you get it back at the end, right? That's all from the earlier, you know, exam five material. But before you use all of that information, you're also going to have to, you know, um, get the whack, right? So let's see. Now you also have a little bit more information here for cash flows. This is the company is going to sell this facility for an estimated $1.1 million. Now that's going to be uh, your uh, salvage value and it's going to because you your book value goes down to zero your after tax salvage value is just going to be that salvage value times one minus the tax rate. And I should explain that in a little note there at the very bottom of this page. But um, Nonetheless, let's first take care of business and get the whack. Here we go. The company has 65,000 shares of common stock outstanding at a market price of $47 a share. So you multiply those two numbers to get the total value of common stock. If you look here, I changed the wording here uh, from just paid a dividend to next year the stock will pay an annual dividend of $1.75 a share. And that's important to note. You want to make sure that you realize that, and I'm going to leave that language just like that on the exam. It's, I want you to understand that a dollar seventy-five cents a share, or that buck seventy-five is D one, not D zero, but D one. Okay. The dividend is expected to increase by four point five percent annually. So there's G. The firm also has fifteen thousand shares of fifteen percent stock with a market value of ninety-five dollars a share. So fifteen thousand times ninety-five bucks is going to give you total value for preferred stock. Um, preferred stock has a par value of a hundred dollars. That's you know that I didn't even have to write that in there, but everybody knows that the company has a 10% semi-annual coupon bond issued outstanding with a total um, face value of 1.5 million. So that means right there that there's 1,500 bonds. 
if you look at the note that I put right after the question marks for the two questions of this in this problem you'll see note and then it says like hashtag or number sign you know most students see that it's hashtag now uh, but that number sign it has a little subscript B and that stands for number bonds I got the number bonds by taking this 1.5 million dollar issue and dividing it by par or thousand dollar face value for each bond so they obviously issued 1500 bonds okay and then to get the price, they tell me the price is currently priced at 102% of par. So uh, 1.02 times $1,000 is 1,020. That's also in that note right after the semicolon. So now all I have to do to get the value of debt is to multiply 1,500 times 1,020 price. And you get uh, $1,530,000 worth of debt uh, in this company. Okay. And so now that you've done all of that, it says the tax rate's 34%. Should the firm pursue the expansion project at this point in time? Why or why not? Well, let's go ahead and spill the beans, right? You're going to pursue it if the net present value is positive. So let's make sure we can figure out whether or not the net present value is positive. So what we'll do here is we're going to uh, get the common stock and the preferred stock and the debt all like we did last time. They all have to eventually you know add up to give you the total value you get a ratio for each one of them and those percentages have to add up to 100 percent or if you keep them in decimal form they have to add up to one okay and that's that's a good way to check that you did it right is to go ahead and check and make sure that they add up to one now you gotta get the three different costs right so to get the cost of equity you're just gonna use the dividend growth model because they didn't give you the beta or any of the other information that you need to use to, to do the cap M so here we're gonna do D1 that bucks 75 over P0 which is $47 uh, plus G which is 4.5 percent and you're gonna get 0 0.082234 or you know right around 8.2 percent now to get the cost of preferred stock, once again it's the percentage times par. We know that's a hundred bucks uh, for par, so we go back and we look and then we see that it is a 15% uh, preferred stock, so that's 15 bucks uh, over the price of 95 bucks for preferred stock. So 15 dollars over 95 dollars is 15.7895%. Uh, Step four, we're going to get the cost of debt. Remember these are your time value money buttons on your calculator. Uh, it's an 18-year semi-annual coupon bond, so 18 times 2 is 36. The price we've already calculated up in step 1, so we just make it negative. That's a negative 1,020. The payment is going to be the coupon rate divided, you know, times par divided by 2. And if you look here, you're going to see that this is a 10% semi-annual coupon bond. So 10% times, a, uh, you know, 1,000 is 100, divide that by 2, it's 50, so $50 coupon payments. Future value is always 1,000 or par. Solve for I, uh, you're going to get 4.8811, that's your semi-annual yield to maturity. Multiply that by 2, and now you have your cost of debt, right? Your cost of debt is your annual yield to maturity, which is 9.7619%. So, once you've got all that information, you can then plug and chug into the WAC, just like we did in problem number 1. Okay, so you're going to multiply each weight times its each cost, add those together, but make sure you remember in that third section where you're going to multiply the weight of debt times the cost of debt that you also throw in the 1 minus T, right? Because you're, you're using pre-tax cost of debt numbers, okay? Add all that up, you get a whack of 9.56%. Now, that is the company's whack. Remember, we have to get the project whack because this is a riskier project so that we adjust it by 5%. You're going to add 5% to it, so 9.56% becomes 14.56%. Okay. Now, last step is to get the MPV. So we're going to put in all the cash flows that they told us here, you, which you found in the first half of this problem. Cash flow zero is going to be negative 27,200, negative 27,200,000 000 for the initial cost minus 987,000 for a change in networking capital so that is negative 28 million 187,000 that will go in cash flow zero cash flow one through cash flow 20 they're all going to have this operating cash flow of 1.85 million okay however that last cash flow has got some extra stuff in it so for cash flow one what we'll do is we'll put in 1.85 million and then we're going to change our frequency not to 20 but to 19 okay because we don't want to enter this thing 
a whole bunch of times, but we'll change it to 19, and then cash flow 2 becomes the year 20, right? So in cash flow 2, what we're going to do is you'll also get that operating cash flow, but you're going to get also the after-tax salvage value, okay? If you remember that they were going to sell this, they're going to sell this for $1.1 million, and because there's no salvage value, all you have to do is multiply that by 1 minus uh, the tax rate. So you see me uh, do that there, plus the change in networking capital. You get that 987 back, right? So 987,000 comes back to you. You add these three together, 1.85 million, the after-tax salvage value, and this change in networking capital, and you're going to get 3,563,000, okay? That's, you know, leave your frequency alone, leave it at one. And now all you have to do is hit your MPV button, okay? Make your eye the project whack. Don't make it the company whack. Make it the project whack. You're going to want to put in 14.56%. Remember, this is a percent. This is not a decimal. And then you're going to hit the down arrow, hit MPV, and hit compute. You're going to get this whopping negative number, negative $16,208,978.40. You know, negative 16 million or negative five bucks whatever it's negative so you're definitely going to uh, reject this project right and so that that would be another answer on the exam that's a pretty big problem you see I just used a whole lot of stuff that we've been working on uh, pretty much from uh, exam two and on and probably even exam one if you want to just you know throw in some understanding of some basic uh, accounting concepts so that's a wonderful problem and it shows you kind of how the WAC brings everything full circle to where you can understand that uh, all of these math equations that we've been learning about are not just relevant for investments but they're relevant for companies too so you can take that those tools with you in your toolbox when you go out on the job market. now here in problem number 33 uh, I mean problem number three number three and number four are actually a little bit easier in my opinion than number two it's just that they require a little bit less work because you don't have to go get the weights. Uh, the weights are pretty easy to figure out from a very important concept that you probably learned in exam one, which was that you know debt to equity. So let's take a look. Swiser Industries has two separate divisions. It's got a division X, which is going to give a discount rate of minus 1%. Now, why would it do that? Because it's a little bit safer. And division Y has more risk, so it's going to tell you to add 2% to the WAC. No big deal. Company has a debt to equity ratio of 0.35. That's great because you can figure out weights from a debt to equity ratio and a tax rate of 30%. 30%. They go ahead and flat tell you the cost of equity, no having to figure that out. And then look, they're even super nice here. They give you the after tax, after tax cost of debt. So you don't even have to multiply by one minus T when you plug this into the WAC, okay? Uh, of 4.1%. And then it says presently each division is considering a new project. Okay, so they both have different um, internal rates of return that they're expecting to get, right? So you're going to compare these to the wax and see which one's better. And that is how you'd figure out whether or not to accept the projects. So, for example, let's take a look. First thing you want to do is get the weights. Now, there's a real clever trick here if you'll follow me. If you say debt to equity is 0.35, that's 0.35 under an understood one. Okay, and what I mean by that is pick any number. If I told you that your age was 22, that's the exact same equivalent as saying your age is 22 over 1. Okay, so we're not doing anything crazy there. But if you look at that, now you can see that you could say debt is equal to 0.35 because they're both in the numerator and that equity is equal to 1. Okay, now total value of company is pretty much just like with that total accounting equation that assets equals debt plus equity that's what we're going to do here we're going to kind of assume value is kind of like the total assets right um, so V is going to be equal to D plus E so you can say uh, 0.35 plus 1 and so the total value in this company is going to be 1.35 now there, you're doing this because now that you've got a, a number for V you can get a ratio right the weight of debt is D over V and the weight of equity is E over V so for the weight of debt you would do 0.35 over 1.35 and for the weight of equity you're gonna do 1 over 1.35 you get these two percentages in this case it looks like 26 percent and 74 percent you add them together you're supposed to get hundred percent right but look how fast that was so much faster than the first steps in problem uh, one and two okay now to get the whack you can also got a little bit of a shortcut here you may have noticed that we're not dealing with any preferred stock 
So this, um, if you have preferred stock, then this debt to equity trick, it wouldn't really work out very well. But in this problem, it works out well because there's no preferred stock. And so you just take the weight of equity times the cost of equity that they give you, which is 11.7% uh, plus the weight of debt um, times the after-tax cost of debt, okay? And since there's the after-tax cost of debt, you just have to throw in this 4.1%. Um, you don't have to multiply that by one minus tax rate, okay? So do the multi multiply those numbers for weight for equity first and multiply the numbers for debt first and then add them together you get the whack 9.73 percent right now in steps three and four go ahead and make a quick adjustment for x uh, or project x the whack is going to be one percent lower so that's 8.73 percent for project y it's going to be two percent higher so that's 11.73 percent you're going to have to compare those numbers to the to the IRRs that you're expecting to get for those projects, right? So if you're supposed to get 13.6% for project X, then you can see that you're, what you're going to get is much higher than what you need, so you'd accept that project. Same thing with project Y. You're going to expect 12.9%, which is much higher than what you need, which is 11.73%, so you're going to accept it as well. So in this case, you're going to accept both X and Y projects. Why? Because their internal rate of returns are higher than what you need, which is the project's weighted average cost of capital. So that's a pretty easy and uh, useful problem. Let's check out the last one. Okay, number four is a very easy problem that combines some of the steps of uh, two and problem three. You're going to end up getting an MPV, but it's a very watered down MPV. Uh, you'll, I think you'll find that it's pretty easy. Let's take a look. Orchard Farm, Orchard Farms has a pre-tax, pre-tax, pre-tax right there, right? So make sure you know that that doesn't mean after tax cost of debt of 6.32% and a cost of equity of 18.4%. So you don't have to calculate those costs. They've already given them to you. Firm uses uh, a subjective approach to determine project discount rates. Currently, firm is considering a project to which it has signed an adjustment factor of minus 1.5%. What does that mean? Well, when you get the whack, take a 1.5% off. Uh, the firm's tax rate is 35% and its debt to equity is 0 0.45. Okay? Make sure that you can see that because I wrote over the top of that. It's 0 0.45. Okay, that's the debt to equity, which is great because then that makes getting the weights real easy to get, assuming there's no preferred stock, which is what we're going to assume here. Project has an initial cost of 5.8 million, so that's for your cash flows to get the MPV. Produces cash inflows of 1.34 million. There you go. That's also for cash flows to get the MPV. That's it, right? Not not a whole lot in there. There's no change in networking capital or, or um, after-tax salvage value like we dealt with in problem two, so this should be really easy, right? What is the net present value of this project? Okay, first thing we're going to do is get the weights. Remember, if you if debt to equity is 0 0.45, then you can put uh, that as 0 0.45 over 1 and say debt is equal to 0 0.45 and equity is equal to 1. You add those two together, you add your debt and your equity together, it's like having the total assets in a company or the total value, right? That's how we're going to get V. So V is going to be 1.45, and if you do D over V, you get the weight of debt. If you do E over V, you get the weight of equity. And in this case, you're going to have 31% for the weight of debt, 69% for the weight of equity. Add those together, that's 100%. Okay. Now, to get the WAC, slightly different than in problem three because we have the pre-tax cost of debt. They did give us pretty much all the information we need, so it is plug and chug. Just be careful. So to get the, the first part uh, for equity, you're going to do the weight of equity times the cost of equity of 18.4%. To get the second part, uh, which is, deals with debt, you're going to do the weight of debt times the pre-tax cost of debt, which if you look up, you'll see that the tax cost of debt is 6.32%. Uh, then you're going to multiply that by 1 minus the tax rate. So yeah, that's where that 65% comes from. Okay, You plug and chug there. You finish up uh, adding all that together. And then you're going to get 13.9646%. So that's the company's WAC, not the project WAC, the company's WAC. You subtract off 1.5%. Now you've got the project WAC. Okay, So now that you've got the WAC for this company's project, uh, that will be your I to get MPV. So you'll go to your cash flow buttons on your calculator, and you'll change initial cost to negative uh, 5800000 
and you're going to change cash flow one to one million three hundred forty thousand okay and then you're going to change your frequency to six years or six and that's it okay go over to your MPV put in a uh, value for I do your MPV and hit compute now you'll notice that you've got a negative number here once again negative three hundred sixty two thousand four hundred fifty two and make sure that you put in your projects whack for I but now that you know that that's a negative MPV would you accept this project no you would not okay so hopefully you've gotten uh, used to how the WAC process, or at least calculating the WAC, is, you know, is done, and also how you can use that information to become your, you know, required return or your I in the MPV, right? Full circle. And I really think that uh, if you look, take a look at the math involved here, you'll say this really did use a whole lot of the different types of tools that we learned in class. If you have any questions about the test guide, please let me know. This concludes the lecture 6.3, review for tests.